Howdy friends, welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon HeartGold. You might be wondering why we are here in Goldenrod City. That is because it is now technically Sunday, and we have a number of things to do here in Goldenrod. Hopefully I won't forget any. Uh, I have been watering our seeds, as you can see, and let me go ahead and water them again just to be extra sure. Because, whoops, I want to water all the seeds, not just that one. And that way they will hopefully grow lots of berries. Before we leave, I would also like to um, buy some mulch. I'm not quite sure what the different mulches do, but I feel like that could help us get even more berries. And those will um, make our Pokemon better, or heal our Pokemon at least, and um, also help us get some Moo Moo Milk from the Miltank Farm. All right, go ahead and take me to the sixth floor. We are going to do our daily lottery. And apparently there's also a lady here who gives out TMs. So we're going to try to find her. And uh, since it's Sunday, talk to her as well. I also got a haircut um, for, I think it was Bailey for a little while ago, just while I was in town. And there's a few other things I want to do here as well. But first, let's see what we get. All right, take your ticket, number three prize, and it is an Asperberry. So we already have one of those, but now we have two. Um, whoops. Wrong way. I think the guy who told us about the lady was here, so I assume the lady is here too. Nope, he's the vending machine dude. Don't think it was her. Um, I do listen to the radio, but only very infrequently. I listen to it a lot in real life, because I do a lot of driving, and um, I bought satellite radio so that I actually stay in range of it and don't have to sit through lots of commercials or um, chain stations, so definitely recommend. He will trade a drowsy. I do not have a drowsy. I could easily catch one. There's tons of drowsy on the route just south of here. Uh, I also spent a lot of time training there. Um, as you can see, CN is now up to level 20, and actually knows some pretty good moves. Let me real quick just update you guys on... Uh, a few new moves. So um, he learned Ember and Faint Attack by leveling up. Ember is a special fire attack. You can see that his physical attack is actually a little higher than his special attack. Um, Magby is unique in that perspective for its evolutionary line. Once it evolves into Magmar and then Magmar Tar, its special attack will be higher. Um, Faint Attack is a physical attack. It's dark type. Pretty good move, especially for this level of the game. Um, and I realized that a couple of my Pokemon could learn Headbutt, which is actually a fairly good normal type attack. Um, 70 base power, 100% accuracy, chance to flinch. What's not to love? So I taught him a Headbutt, and also I went ahead and used our Fire Blast TM, which reminds me I do want to buy a second Fire Blast TM um, so that we can teach it to Olive at some point, probably around level 30. Um, let me go through. Actually, Olive I think has the same moveset still. Um... I did go ahead and delete Nature Power since um, it wasn't really as good as I thought it was. Natural natural gift, not Nature Power. Um, and also taught Bayleaf Headbutt, which is, again, a really good normal type attack. Um, and because he no longer has Natural Gift, I took away um, the berry and gave him back his Miracle Seed. So that's a better fit, I think. I also got a... Um, Shell Bell. I don't remember where. I think I found it maybe back by Union Cave. I've done a little walking as I've tried to find a good place to train up our um, our C in there. Um, so same moves, but he does have a Shell Bell now, which will heal him up uh, a little bit every time he attacks. And then um, you guys know Sandshrew and Haunter. Same old, same old. So, all right, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm glad I actually saw that, because I probably would have forgotten to buy Fire Blast otherwise. Um, I also did the bug catching contest uh, right before Saturday ended, and oh, there's a natural gift as well as a TM. I won TM 38, I believe. Once again, it's funny how I remember which one is which. Now we'll just take one because it is very expensive. We have a little more money now, but not a ton still. Nope, I think that's it. Tempted to buy some more pokin, pokins, <laughs> some more potions or pokeballs. Oh. Um, uh, there's your TM, is this the TM lady? On some days a lady comes to check out your Pokemon. She's the only lady here, and what do we get? TM27 is... Return! Okay. 
So she gives you return, I guess, if she likes your Pokemon enough. I was thinking the people in that house over there did that, but I guess she does. Uh, I wonder if she gives you like frustration if your Pokemon don't like you, but I guess whatever Pokemon we had out first, um, Cian actually, which is kind of surprising, likes us. Or maybe she just looks in your inventory and if we're in your party and if any of your Pokemon like you a lot, she'll give you the, uh, the item. Um, that's really interesting because I don't know how much return will do at this stage in the game. I'm glad I got, um, gave Cherry a haircut because that means he likes me a lot. Um, I'm wondering if return is going to be better than headbutt. I should definitely teach it to him at some point. Um, might wait until like one more haircut though, not sure. But um, as I was saying, um, I did, let me just check off my list as I do this. I did um, do the bug catching contest again. And ironically, I was trying to go for third place because I really wanted uh, a citrus berry, which is the third type or the third place move, the third place prize rather. Um, this is what happens when I make videos at almost 3 o'clock in the morning. But it is still weekend, so why not, right? Because um, I don't need another Sunstone. I forgot what the second prize... Oh, it's an Everstone. Or Everstone? Or I think it's Everstone. Which, um, if your Pokemon holds it, it won't evolve. So it's kind of nice if you're trying to trade like a Haunter but don't want them to evolve. Or if, um, say, you just get tired of hitting B every time your Pokemon tries to level up or you're worried you might miss it one time. So it has that benefit. It also is really nice for breeding. It has some um, interesting uses there that I won't get into because they're they're pretty complicated and not something that most players really need to worry about. Um, this is the bicycle shop. I think this might be that house. It's actually another house we want to visit here as well. It's friendly towards you. It looks sort of happy. Yeah, it's about what I expected from a fairly new Pokemon. We've done a decent bit of training and walking together. I think we've grown fairly close, but um, probably not as much as some of my other Pokemon. So how much does Cherry like me? It looks really happy, must love you a lot, so maybe Return would be good then. Um, I might look it up uh, after this episode. If I f don't forget, let me write a note. Look up friendliness and um, see what her sayings mean, because it probably tells you somewhere. Uh, on Bulbapedia, and then I can use that to figure out if Return is better than Headbutt. If it's about the same, I'll stick to Headbutt, because Headbutt has that nice flinch chance, but otherwise, I will switch. Um, we are going to get another Pokemon, and hopefully we can just have it sent to our Pokemon box, because I don't have space in the party. This is, as you might remember, Bill's house, and there's Bill, back from Ecritique City. Hi, Joe. Would you do something for me and take this Eevee? It came over when I was adjusting Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Someone has to take care of it, but I don't like being outside. Can I count on you to play with it, Joe? Oh, I feel bad lying to him, because it's honestly going to sit in my PC for the rest of the game, probably. But, um, sure. Oh, I can't carry it. Okay, well, I'm probably not a good trainer for Eevee anyway, because, um, like I said, I'm just, I have a full team in my head, and I, uh, came really close to having Espeon as part of that team, like we discussed earlier, in which case I would have taken that Eevee and trained it up. It's only level like five or one, I think. But still, my view is also only level one. Um, but yeah, since I'm not going to actually use it, uh, I don't really feel like switching out the Pokemon. Maybe I'll go get Eevee off screen, we'll see. Um, I'll make a note of that as well. It'll save me the trouble of having to make two more of these little card things. All right, so we visited Bill. So I think the last thing I want to do here is grab some mulch. Um, so what else happened since our last episode? Oh, the um, the train rail there, um, the elevated like maglev thing made me remember that if you look, not closely, if you um, are paying half a bit of attention on whatever route it is that's by Union Cave, the one um, south of Violet City and east of Azalea, you can see the maglev train bridge going over top of you, which I always just thought was some random bridge, or I guess I probably knew at one point what it was, but when we were through there earlier, I didn't really put any thought into it. Um, but obviously it's the it's the bridge there, which makes a lot of sense, because it'd be really, really weird if this bridge wasn't there. Um, let me just bring up the town map real quick to kind of show you what I mean. So, yes, town map. So we are here. So it goes across this route right about here. So if you didn't see it, it'd be like, wait, does it go underground? I guess that would make sense, but you know, you're not really sure where it goes. I really hope that it also appears on these two routes. That'd be really awesome. You could really see it going all the way over to the next region, Kanto. 
but um, I don't know if you can or not. It might kind of go south over the water. But I, I really, I'll have to look next time on one of these two routes and see if it's there. Because I probably walked under it and just didn't notice at all. Alright, you know what? Let's Can we change our Poke Gear menu? I'm not sure I like this one. Settings. It's kind of scary looking. Um, this one looks kind of cool. Mm, a little bright. This is kind of traditional. Kind of um, fitting for Johto. Let's stick with this, this one for a while. Alright, so uh, while we're here, let's buy some mulch. Hopefully they'll tell you what, what it does. I do. Um, growth mulch, damp mulch, stable mulch, or gooey mulch. Um, what I'm, I used to know this, but um, even recently when I played like the other Let's Play games, um, I think growth mulch makes them grow either faster, have more berries, damp makes them not have to be watered as much. I don't remember the other two. Let's see. So here's the description. Um, so growth mulch will make uh, the growth time a little bit shorter. But the soil dries out a lot faster. Damp mulch makes is the opposite. So they're not really beneficial. They're kind of pros and cons. Um, damp mulch makes the soil dry out slower, but also causes it to grow slower. So if you don't have a lot of time to play, don't play very often, um, it's good to use damp mulch. might be good for me to use during a weekday, for example. Um, stable mulch makes the berries stay on the plant longer, which I guess, you, guess gives you more chances to water it and probably means overall you get um, more berries off of it. And gooey mulch um, makes berry plants regrow from dead plants. So that's if you really aren't going to play the game for a while. Um, the plants will actually regrow even if you don't harvest them. They'll eventually die, but they'll regrow. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's go with the growth mulch, because it doesn't say that it... <laughs> yeah, it's made out of Pokemons, um, you know. Oh, do I only get one? All right, let me buy a few of them. Yeah, you just buy one at a time. That's kind of annoying. Um, so it seems like it could provide the same yield as long as you continue to water it. And since tomorrow is a Sunday, um, I'm going to go ahead and buy a few of these. Also, I have one more week of work, but after that it's the holiday break, and I have off all week. So that's going to be awesome. Um, I'm going to try to spend the whole thing playing Pokemon. <laughs> Obviously, I have a lot of other things to do because it's the holidays, but um, if I'm being honest with myself, I'm having so much fun playing this game, I probably will play it at least a little bit every day, or at least most days. Um, so maybe I should get some of the damn mulch, too. Yeah, alright. Am I even going to remember to use any of this? Maybe not. Alright, damn mulch. And we'll buy one more damn mulch. And then we should be pretty good to go. I also stopped by Kurt's place, got some more Pokeballs, dropped off more Apricorns. The usual rounds. Um, I got an old rod, that was pretty cool. We can go fishing when we get to some water. Can't catch too many good Pokemon with an old rod, but um, I think they're all like level 10. In the original Generation 1 games, you could only catch Magikarp, I'm pretty sure, with an old rod, but they didn't prove that. In fact, let's go ahead and use an old rod now. Key items... Old rod. Just to see what we find. Of course, I do have a, oh, I have a um, grass type in my lead. Good. It's a lot of fun too because it's it's like a little mini game in the later versions where you actually have to hit A at just the right time. I think the third generation probably did it best, where um, it had like the dot 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 dot, dot and you kept like wanting to hit it. So it's almost like a Simon Says type of game where you uh, have to hit it, but only when it actually has the explanation point, not where it has the ellipses. Alright, Magikarp is pretty weak, so it's not going to give us a lot of experience. Might be enough to hit level 29. Nope, not really. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and just switch out to Sien, because he could use the XP of any fights we might encounter. Um, what? Oh, okay, other exciting thing that happened. So as soon as I left Ecruteek, I put um, I put Sien at the front of the party. Only level 1, figured I'd get some experience by switching them out, and what do I run into but an Entei, um, one of the legendary dogs. They are available in the wild, even at this stage in the game, they're level 40, so obviously they're really, really hard to catch. Um, I'm using this just so I don't get poison point. And uh, CN does have the charcoal, so lots of power. Um, so I don't even know how you would go about catching an Entei at this stage in the game. You could use Mean Look if 
you had like maybe like a level like 30 Haunter, if you evolved into a Gengar, you might have a chance. Actually, that'd be pretty good because you could mean look at Empire to sleep. Um, but I think Entei can still roar, which also ends the battle, so there's really only so much you can do. I guess you have to put it to sleep right away and then keep it asleep. So it would be an amazingly powerful Pokemon if you uh, were to catch it at this stage in the game. Level 40 and a Legendary, that's a, uh, a good combination there. But we didn't catch it. I went ahead because I had Magby out, so um, I just threw a like a Ultra Ball or Great Ball, whatever one I had, right away. And I didn't catch it. All right, so he didn't poison me, but I did poison him. That's pretty cool. Saves me a turn. Very nice. And I'm pretty sure that only Raikou, the Electric Dog, and Entei, the Fire Dog, are available. Never really been a huge fan of Entei. I mean, he, he's cool. Like, I like him. But, um... I think it's mainly because Arcanine is like one of my favorite Pokemon, and Entei outclasses Arcanine in most ways. I've actually seen Arcanine be used in some recent like competitive battling videos, so that's kind of cool. He apparently has a lot of utility in double battles, with a helping hand and extreme speed and his ability Intimidate. In fact, his ability Intimidate makes him arguably more useful than Entei to begin with, but... Um, like in Pokemon Go, for example, Entei is just straight out better. But I still have a level 40 Arcanine because it's one of the first Pokemon I caught, or at least the first like couple weeks of playing, and I've always liked Arcanine, so you gotta play with the Pokemon you love, right? That's what makes it fun. And I love strong Pokemon, so it's not like I'm gonna play with like a, I don't know, a uh, Farfetch the entire game or something. No offense to Farfetched. Um, let's go grab these um, the apricots right while we're here. Apricorns. Have I been calling them apricots? I feel like I have. It's that darn radio quiz thing. Got me all messed up now. Yep. Oh! I rem Oh, this is the guy that gives you a different held item each day of the week. I totally forgot he existed until just now. Like, I haven't thought about him in probably years. It's funny what your mind brings back, though. Sunny of Sunday. Oh, yeah, there's a different sibling here each day of the week. That's what it is. The Magnet. That powers up electric-type attacks. So we'll use that uh, maybe on one of our Pokémon. All right, that's cool. I should make sure I come up here. Um, Monica is the Monday girl, of course. Every day. Did we... What did we... I didn't, did we get, like, charcoal here before? I forgot what we got here before. Um, if anything. Hopefully we didn't just miss talking to somebody. Or maybe there's one day where there's nobody here and we just happened to be here that day. I'll have to go back and look. I'll probably forget to do that, in all honesty, though. But that's okay. Um, I will, let me just make a note, too. Weekday sibling because it would be nice to get some other uh, items eventually. If I can get a bugger fighting type one, that'd be good for Heracross. Um, otherwise, and then Togepi could use a number of different held items. Let's make this short with a Fire Blast. I did feel a little bit hesitant to give Magby Fire Blast because it's so powerful. Um, he will actually learn it eventually anyway. Although I'll probably stick with Flamethrower because it's a lot more reliable and it has more power points. So, see, when it becomes... If they had the same amount of power points, Fire Blast and Flamethrower, I'd be really tempted. Because Fire Blast has 25 more power, 120 instead of 95. And um, it's only 15% less accurate, 85 instead of 100. So it would be really a toss-up. But that's one of those few moves where power points really make the difference. Alright, now that we're back here, we're going to heal up and then do some really cool Pokémon battles. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to use Magby in these battles, because he's going to be at a type disadvantage or an even type matchup in the best case scenarios. Well, actually, you know, he might have a decent matchup in one of the scenarios, but um, I don't remember which one's which. So let's bring out Olive. I feel like Olive is a pretty versatile Pokemon. And of course, we get to use Metronome, so that's always fun. Hopefully you guys enjoy it as much as I do. Alright, we are going to enter the Ecrutique Dance Theater, in which we might see some familiar faces. Hey, hey! Stop dancing such a serious dance. Show me something like a hula dance. You mustn't push such a request on me. Huh? Are you telling me you don't respect what the customer wants? Well, then I'll show you how to dance. I'll show you a great one. Wah! Uh, Team Rocket dancing. Not something I really wanted to see. Ooh, ouch, this stomach ache. I wouldn't let this guy act like that were it not for the pain. What's the deal with that Team Rocket grunt messing with my kimono girl? You are a trainer, aren't you? Please help her. He must... I hope he's the owner, not just some creepy guy who calls her my kimono girl. Even being the owner, that's still a creepy way to say it, but um, we'll assume the thing is lost in translation here. 
What about Psyduck? Go have Psyduck attack him. To do such a terrible thing to a kimono girl. I don't understand how young people behave these days. Hey, we're not all bad. None of that, uh... Millennial such and such crap. Alright, um... So this is actually a little different than Gen 2. Huh, who are you? You dare to get in my way? It's kind of cool that they added a little Team Rocket thing here, because uh, besides Slowpoke Well, I think it's going to be a while before we face Team Rocket. As far as I can recall, we don't otherwise face them until after the, um... After the 6th gym. Level 12, so we could have beat this guy forever ago. He's really, really weak. He's like as weak as the trainers that were at Slowpoke Well. I have to agree with my rival there. Team Rocket, for the most part, are, uh... A bunch of weaklings. Which is good, because they're also bad people, so you don't want the bad people to be strong. Their executives are a little more formidable. They're not as good as gym leaders, but they're they're definitely worthy opponents. I better leave. Okay, good, get out of here. That's right, I think this game might do things differently because the kimono girls are more laid into its plot. It's one of those things where the game developers had more time to refine things and they had more experience as developers. Um, and probably more money too. So they really took Heart Gold and Silver, already great games, and really made them reach their full potential here, or at least a lot closer to it. By incorporating some of the ideas from the later games, like having um, more of a real plot besides the, uh, the gym leader plot. You must be Joe, correct? That was indeed excellent. Kind and strong, good at raising Pokemon as well. That person does know what to look for in people. Oh, that was just me talking to myself. Never mind. Um, okay. Oh, I wonder if this guy gives us what we're here to get. Yes, he does. Wonderful! You were so courteous for your age. It was a rare sight to see. I want you to have this. Don't be shy. Take it. HM3. That is Surf. Alright, very nice. It's a move that lets people, lets Pokemon rather, and people riding them, swim across the water in the overworld, and is a very, very good water type move in the, um, in the games. Doesn't have any secondary effect. But otherwise, it's fairly similar to, like, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, or Flamethrower. It's just a really solid water-type attack, one you'll see quite a lot. Um, and I'm sure any of you who have played Pokemon at all before are familiar with Surf, so I don't know what I'm talking about. But it's a good move. Um, unfortunately, I don't think any of our Pokemon can learn it. I'm trying to think of who we have in the PC, and even there, I don't think anyone can learn it. Hmm. Maybe I could get that EV and buy a Water Stone at the um, department store and... Evolve Eevee into Vaporeon, or I could go. F I could probably just go fishing and catch something. Hopefully, a little better than a Magikarp. We'll have to uh, cross that bridge when we come to it, or cross that ocean when we come to it, as it were. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put Cian back in the lead. And onward we will head. Um. Yes, like I said, I did get a citrus... Oh, more apricorns? Not apricots. Um, I did get um, a citrus berry, which is a berry that I think in this generation heals 30 HP. Much better than Orin Berry's 10. But I don't want to give it to a Pokemon yet, because I want to actually use this one to plant it to make more citrus berries. I think they take a little longer to grow, so it's a good thing that we got that mulch. Alright, Eradicate, that should be a decent amount of experience. Gonna use our best move, Fire Blast. The main reason I told I have Fire Blast is because I think we're gonna be facing a lot of fairly decent level Pokemon, probably around the same level as Sienna is. And I don't wanna be using like a bazillion heal items or running back to the Pokemon Center every two fights. Um, so I figured this will give him a little bit of an advantage, even uh, if otherwise his attacks are a little little... I don't want to say lackluster, they're fine attacks, but they're nothing amazing. And it will be a little while before we learn Flamethrower. He'll probably be a Magmar first. And um, as with most Pokemon that evolve, I'm pretty sure Magmar learns Flamethrower a few levels after um, uh, Magby would if you didn't evolve him. But I'm going to evolve him nonetheless. When the time comes... Alright, so I do think I have some more Orin Berries. Let's go ahead and uh, feed Miltank while we're here. If I remember correctly, it actually takes quite a few Orin Berries, like almost a frustrating amount. Or at least it didn't gold and silver. It was like probably 10 or 15, something that's kind of hard to come by. Oh, all the Miltank are inside. Oh, because it's nighttime! Oh, that's so cool! I love when games do that. 
I remember when that was like a really big deal, like in the Elder Scrolls games, when I guess it was Oblivion was maybe the first one that did that, and it was like, whoa, the NPCs actually have lives, that's so cool. Now, like, every game does that, but it was big back in the day, and this is a fairly old game, like 2010 maybe, somewhere around there, so kind of surprising. Um, it's, oh, that's not the sick one. This one is, clearly. It's Cry is Weak, yes. We will give an Orin Berry to Miltank. Do we have any more? Nope, just the one. I think I took that one from um, Heracross, maybe, when I gave him the uh, Shell Bell. I think that's what happened. Who are you? Oh, Cameron the Photographer. Sure. I uh, met him in Elix Forest when I was training Magby as well. He really travels a lot, it seems. <laughs> that's a very pixelated photograph, really. That's like more pixelated than the game itself, but... I guess they didn't have time to give these guys any more definitions, so... Whatever. I also do apologize if any of you guys are trying to watch this on like a giant TV or even like a normal sized computer screen. Um, the main screen probably looks a little pixelated, but that's just the nature of the game. So I highly recommend watching it not in a full window or from a distance, because it probably looks better that way. But um, I assume that we are at, what, episode 18 now? You guys have probably figured out how you like watching this. Let's play. Luckily, as we go further on, um, the graphics will only get better, so that should be less and less of an issue. So our next generation, or our next Let's Play is going to be um, uh, Omega Sapphire, which will be Gen 6. I'm trying to go through the different regions, so I played Y first just because that's the one I felt like playing, but um, or X, I guess it was. But, um, oh, another fisherman, maybe? No. Although I think there actually might be a fisherman here in the city. If we could get a super rod, or a good, a good rod rather, um, that would allow us to get a pretty decent water type Pokemon. Are these sailors going to fight us? No. Okay. Sailors in a cafe. Very, um, I don't want to say cliche. Cliche, but not in a bad way. Have you ever noticed the mountains that there are boulders? You can move them with the move strength. Yes, I'm aware. Mount Mortar. Where isn't Mount Mortar in a different region? I don't really know. All right, he has. What does he have? Hardy fare for beefy sailors. I guess I'm not a beefy sailor, so I can't have hardy fare. But I want some hardy fare. Um, this reminds me of. You guys ever heard the song Brandy? Or Brandy, you're a fine girl by Looking Glass. Great song. Um, oh, sorry, I had the cursor on the screen there. It's probably annoying. Oh wait, I didn't, because it's off the part that won't be recorded. Anyway. Um, it's in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, actually. But it was a song that I've liked long before that. I always love oldies. So, um, One of these houses, I'm pretty sure, has a fishing guy. I don't think it's one of these. I think it's one of the ones down by the water. But I guess I'm wrong. Or, nope, I'm right. Okay, if I have a Krabby, we have trade for Voltorb. I don't have a Krabby, sorry. not really a Pokemon I want either. I heard that in uh, Pokemon Let's Go, you can trade Pokemon for their Alolan forms, which is really cool. That's a good way to make trades actually really useful. Because I feel like in um, the original Gen 1 games, trades actually were useful. You could only get some Pokemon some way. Well, I guess I need to get a seal case for my Pokeballs. I don't know where I get that, to be honest. I probably missed it very early on. Deserted islands on the way to Cianwood. Bad kids are taken to the islands as punishment. Interesting tale. Hopefully you don't take your daughter there. That would be very mean. He is talking about the World Islands, which we will visit at some point. Probably multiple times, in fact. Um, oh, the Lighthouse. Okay. Also known as Glitter Lighthouse. I always just called it Olivine Lighthouse, but then again, I also called the Tower in Ecritique Tin Tower and not Bell Tower. So apparently they're changing all of the, um, all the tower names on us. Not sure why. Cool little sailboat. Um, not sure what's in there. We'll check that out. Oh, actually, oh, I do know what's in there. Um, or what will be in there. I totally forgot about a part of this game. Uh, we've been in here. Where? Maybe... Did I miss a house? Is there another house down here? On the beach? Let me just check up here one more time. We've been in there, I'm pretty sure, right? No, we haven't. All right, here we go. I, yes, I would like to face the sea and fish. All right, sweet. I actually um, really liked fishing when I was younger. Um, 
haven't been in a couple years at least. Um, probably, I think when I was right about the time I graduated from undergrad, so maybe seven or eight years ago. Um, but when I was little, my cousins and my nana, she always, her and before he passed away, my pop pop used to always take us fishing when we were little, so it was kind of a nice little family thing. Um, hopefully, I'll take my kids fishing one day. Maybe my grandkids fishing one day, if uh, fishing is still a thing. Um, but hey, with uh, global warming, the sea levels are rising, so there'll probably be even more places to fish. Uh, <laughs> there'll be a lot of other sucky issues, but I guess that's one slight silver lining, maybe. All right, that guy is not a trainer. Um, but he does like riding waves, apparently. What is this? Oh, the Battle Frontier. Oh, that's cool. And there's some swimmers there in the water. Um, wow, it's already been half an hour. I can't believe that we have already used up a whole episode. Okay, well, um, real quick then, let's just check out the Battle Frontier, because I don't think you can actually participate at this stage in the game. What? I'm the first to arrive? There will soon be a Battle Frontier here. All right. So I think they added that in Crystal. I think Crystal um, was actually the first game that had a Battle Frontier, which is a really nice feature. It's kind of like competitive Pokemon battling for people who don't have friends, I guess. Um, but it's kind of a cool way just to pass the time. If you want to play Pokemon again, use some of your Pokemon once they're level 100. Um, I trained up a team for competitive battling back in the day when I was really enjoying some of the simulators online, got really into it, and I was like, oh, I want a real team. But by the time I actually trained up a real team, which was, it's, it's quite a long and grueling challenge. It's fun, I guess, in a way, because it's it's hard. It feels like what training Pokemon should really be. Um, but kind of the idea that people just cheated and hacked Pokemon at that... I don't know if they still do or if there's been safeguards in place now, but at that time it was, I think, pretty prevalent. Prevalent, whatever the word is. <laughs> I always get that confused. Um, but it happened a lot. Uh, so that kind of took some of the, the fun out of it. Um, but um, it, it was fun breeding like the perfect Pokemon, or as close as you could get to it in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, by the time I trained them, I was kind of falling out of love with Pokemon. I think I did use them to battle some friends, and um, probably my cousins at some point, because they were also into Pokemon a lot. And uh, obviously I used it quite a bit in the Trainer Tower when I was grinding for TMs for other games. That was cool. But we might do the Battle Frontier at some point. In fact, we probably will much later in the game. But um, it's really a thing for the end game or post end game, and not for while you're leveling up. So, all right. Um, I don't know, I feel like we actually kind of did a lot this episode, even though we didn't. But um, either way, we will start the next episode by doing some fishing, catching a Pokemon that can actually uh, learn Surf, and uh, probably do the Lighthouse as well. So a lot of fun things in store. I will catch you guys next time.